Welcome back. Pat, one thing that I've been noticing while I've been sitting here with you is pirate tattoos. Oh, <laughs> yes. I love pirates. <laughs> I've always loved pirates. I was just going to say, when did this fascination with pirates begin? I was a youngster. I was third, fourth grade, watched Earl Flynn and Captain Blood. It's an old movie. I remember sitting on the living room floor, and I just loved that swashbuckling and going after the gold. And from that day on, you know, I just fell in love. And I always, I used to carve in skull and crossbones on my arm with a Ow. knife. I would paint skull and crossbone <laughs> on my on my shirt. The nuns would whack me for having a skull and crossbone <laughs> on. But I just always, and so I, when I start making some money, my first artifact, Jenna, was a 1684 first edition book by Esco Mealing called Buccaneers of America. And when you first open it up, the first plate shows you Captain Morgan. I thought, yeah, and that was the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now I have well over 800 artifacts in the Pirate Museum in St. Augustine, some of which have been loaned to me by the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. The Secretary of State opened up the vaults in the Capitol and allowed me to get the gold doubloons oh. and pieces of eight. <laughs> Just to be able to touch history yeah. is amazing. You were in heaven when Oh, you my, <laughs> like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. <laughs> now, wait, what's this about a jolly, a jolly flag? Or a what? Jolly Roger. Jolly yeah, Roger the skull flag. and crossbone mm -hmm. is called the Jolly Roger. A pirate would shoot a shot across the bow of a prey of mm -hmm. a merchant ship and then would hoist the black flag and then start vapor, banging their cutlasses against the gunnels. And that would scare the bejesus out of the prey, and they would just strike their flag and give up all the booty. But it was this flag, it was more like psychological warfare back in the time, and there was, there's only two flags remaining mm -hmm. in existence, and one of them I had. Uh, that's awesome. That's it's awesome. It's in the museum. It's really cool. And it, when I first got it, it took me, again, over 10 years to get this, because mm -hmm. certain collectors have it. Mm -hmm. I touched it, and it kind of melted in my hand. I thought, oh, so I brought it to the University of Pennsylvania, and over a year it took before they cured it and made sure that it didn't disintegrate. Mm -hmm. Now, St. Augustine is where your museum is yes. located right now. How's the response to people who visit the museum, Pat? Uh, I, that's, you can check on TripAdvisor. We've only been open, it'll be two years. Two years right now! Mm -hmm. That's fact. Congratulations! Was yesterday or today. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's been fabulous, mm -hmm. fabulous. Over 100,000 people come in a year, mm -hmm. and it's really great because people think, oh, it's going to be pirates, it's going to be Johnny Depp. And, no, although Johnny Depp's sword is in there, Good. no. It's <laughs> mostly the first eight exhibition areas we take you back 300 years because all the artifacts are two and 300 years old. And the response has been phenomenal. Everything mm -hmm. I had hoped it would be. Mm -hmm. And it's really good. And so, but I'm not stopping because mm -hmm. just last year I led a maritime expedition to Portobello, Panama in search of Sir Francis Drake, mm -hmm. the greatest part of all times. I know we call him a knight, but he was a pirate. Mm -hmm. And his scuttled ships. So we have some of that in a new exhibit. It's so fascinating. And would you say that your fascination with pirates even escalated since moving to the Keys? Oh, without a doubt, Jenna. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. it has escalated because pirate ships were right around here. Mm -hmm. I, I had the opportunity with Sean Fisher, whose grandfather found the Atosha, to dive on the Atosha. Those gold doubloons and silver pieces of eight, we found two of them that day. That's what pirates were after. These, mm -hmm. are, these are 400 years old. I mean, it's fat. And, and our waters surrounding the Keys, it's just a wonderful experience. And we all want to be a pirate at heart. <laughs> I think you're right we about do. that, you right? Know, no laws, no bosses, no uh -huh. rules. Uh -huh. And pirates weren't all bad. They had democracy on ship. They voted the captain in because they, they hated autocratic society. And remember, in England, if you were born in a certain class, you were stuck there. If you were lower class, you were always lower class. But in a pirate ship, a slave, a lower class seaman could become a captain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, earlier, well, right there, it's a photo of your grandsons, Pat, right behind us right now. Do they have this fascination with pirates? Oh, my goodness, and that's this? Charlie and Mac. Believe it or not, that's how I named Charlie Mac's next I to the green that. parrot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, everyone thinks pirates, they think the skull and crossbones are family heirloom. Mm -hmm. They really, they all <laughs> love pirates. You kidding me? Even my Granddaughters, I have six grandchildren right now. How, how cool is that? So cool. So yeah, they all love parts. I mean, and mm -hmm. my wife buys them skull and crossbow stuff. So whether it's their pajamas, their bathing suits, their rain gear, mm -hmm. and they love the keys. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Charlie's a bubba. He was born in Key West. Oh, how cool is that? And now he's got a restaurant named oh, after him. <laughs> now, Pat, you have the museum in St. Augustine. Any plans to bring a museum in other places throughout the country? No, it's hard, Jenna, because the, the pieces are only one of a kind. It's mm -hmm. not like Ripley's where you can mm -hmm. replicate something. Right. And I don't want to dilute the effect because when you walk through those nine exhibition areas, I want the whole full Monty. I mm -hmm. want you really being emotionally immersed in this atmosphere. It's not, it's not walking through like the Smithsonian, although it's been 
claimed it's like the Smithsonian meets Disney. Mm -hmm. I want you to feel like, you just get that <laughs> hole. Yeah, how cool is this? Because <laughs> you can touch. There's about mm -hmm. two dozen interactives. I mean, we have real cannons mm -hmm. where I had Disney Imagineers touch it. So when you touch the light hole with a fiber optic, it fires, the floor shake, and you think, mm -hmm. oh my, I mean, you see young and old. Give me mm -hmm. that. Let me try that. <laughs> well, we're going to show a video right now, Pat, of you talking a little bit more about the museum in St. Augustine. I enjoyed watching the video, and I know our viewers will. Oh, cool. Well, so enjoy. <laughs> I was just a kid when I first saw Earl Flynn in the movie Captain Blood, fighting his way from slavery into a swashbuckling life of piracy. I was so intrigued by the pirate's freedom from tyranny and authority that I start carving skull and crossbones into my ruler and onto my notebooks at school. Well, needless to say, the nuns didn't like that very much, and they beat me with that ruler. Well, years later, I really had the opportunity to indulge in my passion for pirates, and I bought my first real pirate artifact, a 300-year-old first edition book called Buccaneers of America by Alexander Escomelin. I opened that baby up and I dove inside and I was hooked. Sometimes people ask me if I'm a pirate and I say yes, but 300 years too late. Over the past 30 years I've studied the lives of pirates. I've gone on international maritime adventures to recover their booty and I've collected more than 500 of their rare scattered relics. You can see them all at my St. Augustine Pirate and Treasure Museum in St. Augustine, Florida. Like the world's only pirate treasure chest, and one of only two Jolly Roger flags in existence. And I'm still collecting. Researching and writing about pirates is in my bones. That's the bloody reason why I wrote the Pirate Handbook, with the true-to-life secrets of how to be a pirate and live to tell the tale. You pick this baby up, and you'll be ready to cut some throats. You can call it the ultimate gangway to a life of danger, intrigue, daring, and fortune. Me, I call it a lifestyle, and I'm living it. The question is, will you?